This presentation accompanies the Sisa Dice Chapter 4, Spanish 1. We're going to talk about conjugating. That's a term we've already used in class. You know what it means to conjugate. That you're taking um, an original infinitive form of a verb, like the verb hablar, for example, and changing it according to first, second, and third person. We know that when we conjugate, we always think about the subject pronoun first, and then we match or pair the form of the verb to the subject pronouns. We always talk about subject pronouns as being first person, second person, and third person forms. And so, as we've done in class, and as you already know now, <coughs> sorry, no sotros. The subject pronouns have to be listed in the same order every time because they are arranged as first, second, and third person. And we work with a chart of pronouns because we think about the left side of the chart as being all the singular pronouns, the right side of the chart as being always the plural pronouns. So when I talk about the first person, I can follow across from, oh, first person singular, yo form, first person plural is nosotros. When I conjugate a verb like hablar, as we've done in class, we would take away the AR ending, we'd repeat the part that's left, which is called the stem, and then we would add endings to show that we are working with a first, second, or a third person verb form. The endings for the yo form are always o, the second person ending always ends with an s, the third person singular ending is a simple vowel a for ar verbs. When we work with the verb nosotros, we have our stem plus amos ending. Vosotros is the form that we talk about but we don't really use much. And then the aos, aos, and lo ustedes pronouns. Um, would be matched up with a verb with an A-N ending on it. So that's just a reminder of what we've already been talking about in class. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the second and the third conjugation. So really, there isn't going to be a new concept here. It's just that we're going to be adding verbs and watching the spelling of the verb forms. Um, verbs that are in the second conjugation, which we've talked about before, are the verb infinitives that end with ER. If I'm talking about a third conjugation verb, then it would be an infinitive that ends with IR. So as I'm conjugating through, I'm not going to use AR verb endings for verbs that are in second or third conjugation. You're going to be expecting to see the, uh, the new vowel, okay? The vowel E for the ER verbs, for example. When I work with this verb, we still have our same, this means to eat, we follow our same rules about crossing off the ER, in this case, ending, finding the stem, repeating the stem for each person that we're going to conjugate in. The stem doesn't change, and then we go back through and put on endings that will show we're working with first person or second person or third person. So yo form ending, still an O. Second person ending, ES, instead of the AS ending that you saw before. And for third singular, simply an E. When we work with the first plural form, E-M-O-S, is always going to be the first plural form for ER verbs, and then E-N as we get into that third person plural. Um, so you notice this pattern of endings, it's kind of familiar. In place of A's, you're finding E's. That's the only difference. If we want to talk about vosotros, just so that you have it in your notes, you would work with an E-I-S ending. And remember, that would be used mostly in Spain. Okay, so those are the endings for regular second conjugation verbs. If I want to do a regular third conjugation verb, like the verb vivir, vivir means to live, I'm going to follow my same, my same rules about how I conjugate. So I'll take away the IR ending this time. The piece that's left is called the stem. So I repeat the stem for first, second, and third persons because the stem doesn't change. And then I'll go back through and put on endings that will work for all of the third conjugation IR ending verbs. Those endings, once again, for first person, oh, 
Second person is an ES again, so it looks a lot like the second conjugation so far, even in the third person. When we get to nosotros, that's the only place, besides posotros, that we'll see an actual I. Is when we work with this verb, I-M-O-S, because it's an I-R verb. Okay, I-S if I do posotros, but then back to the E-N ending. So when you look at the endings for second conjugation verbs and you look at the endings for third conjugation verbs, they're practically the same. The only place you're seeing something different is in this third plural spot where, where there's an I-M-O-S. And then vosotros we don't really use much, but we can certainly take a look at that. Okay, so again, just like we had done before, we could think about the charts of endings. So we could talk about, well, AR endings um, and knowing the pattern of just the endings so that we could add those to AR verbs. We do the same kind of thing with the ER verb endings. They're going to look so similar, except we'll place E's in place of the, the A's. So here's the chart of endings that you would work with. E-I-S for plural and then E-N for third plural. Um, and then when I'm working with an I-R verb and conjugating, again, the chart of endings that we would add to any verb that ends in I-R. So the concept we've worked on so much, that shouldn't be the problem. It's just going to be learning a lot of new infinitives as we go. Okay, so watch this again if you need to, but get the endings and then fill in the note-taking sheet that you have from class, and we'll do a lots more practice tomorrow. Hasta luego!